you, mate. Hello, survivors, and welcome to today's video. So we've got something a bit special today. The Dino Lord is going to be explaining to you all how to breed for stat mutations. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel because we have loads more ARC content. Right, I'll let him take it away. So this is my lizard breeding house. I've decided to try and mutate Megalania. I wanted a dino that nobody else had done. So I had a little look through what people have been doing on official. And pretty much everybody's done all your standard Rexes and your Gigas and they've mutated them beyond belief so they're, they're OP so that pixel in it hasn't been done I like Megalania, I thought they were cool so I thought I will do them there's a reason nobody's done them they are shit and they've got the same base melee damage as a Fiomia two less than a fucking Parasaur <laughs> so I've wasted a lot of time mutating the health and the melee of this shit lizard and I built it this house to make it look like it's not a shit. So anyway, um, I will show you the breeding setup. I'm not really knowledgeable with breeding dinos and stat mutations and things. There are people out there which really know what they're doing but I will explain what I've been doing and it's, it's pretty close. So anyway, I've got a house here set up for them and I've got all the females lined up on racks at the top here with their bums hanging over or their bellies hanging over because they seem to lay eggs from their stomachs. Don't know why. I think it's a lizard thing. Um, so they'll all drop down to the floor. So what I do is every single one of these females is clean. And what they mean by a clean female is one that has no mutations in it whatsoever. So it can be bred. I think this one here, yeah, that's been bred by two of my old ones. Even though it's been bred, it has no mutations. You can see there at the top, random mutations uh, on the maternal and the paternal side, both are zero. So that means it's a clean female. It doesn't necessarily have to be wild to be a clean female. It just has to have no mutations. So I tamed a load of level 15s and I cloned them and then I bred loads of them with other ones and every female that came out clean with no mutations whatsoever ended up in this house ready for breeding. Uh, I've got a little bit of space over here to add more because as I get more mutations it's going to get tougher to get one each time. So I've got a little bit of space to, to get a few more. So anyway, when you've got them all lined up and you've collected as many clean females as you can, I then got the lower part of the base where you can see through underneath them all. Every single one of them is set to mate. So I leave them on mating. That's why you keep them in a house because if you're doing a really special dino, you're doing the new R gigas or something like that, other people are wanna, gonna wanna mate with your clean females or mate with them. It's a bit of a spiteful thing they'll do on official. They'll come and mate with them either to stop you mating with them or to see if they can pull a good stat if you've left a good stat out. So best to keep them inside. Nobody wants these fucking things because they're shit. So my house is pretty useless. Ain't nobody going to come along and try and mate with a lizard to try and get a good lizard because they're still crap. But anyway, so I keep them inside and they're all set to mating. So I will set them all to mating and leave them on mating all the time. And then I'll also set them all to ignore group whistles. When a dino is set to ignore all group whistles, you'll know it is, because when you hold select, all the arrows above their head will be yellow, not green. So it's a good way to check to make sure they're all set to ignore group whistles. You'll see down here I've got my main breeders, and if I hold select on them, their arrows will be green. So you know that all the females are set to ignore group whistles. I see the green one over there. The green one? Where's yeah. the green one? Over towards the end. You sure one was green? No, no. Oh. They're not green. I'm the green one will be the strider outside. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, they are all yellow, so they're all set to ignore group whistles and set to mating. And what I'll do then is take, if you're very right at the start, you'll go out and you'll tame 50, 100 dinos and you'll find your best melee you can find and your best health you can find. Or stamina if you want an owl, or weight if you're doing an argy or a gas bags or something. Just your desired stats, you'll find the highest you possibly can. 
So, for example, this is where I've got to on melee, but this would be my highest melee I've managed to tame. And then I would bring him over to the start of my rack, where the, all the females are lined up. I'd start him here. I would set him to enable mating. I'd put him to about here. Enable mating. He'll mate with a certain group of them up to about here, I think. They'll mate. They'll all drop eggs. You run down here. You pick up all the eggs that are falling down. You'll leave him on mating. And you'll walk him along. And you'll do the next batch and so on and so on until you've got and collected all the eggs from the entire row. Once you've got all the eggs from the entire row, what I like to do, just in case I've got a mutation, I don't want to waste mating all my clean females, just in case I've actually got a mutation out of them. So I'll, I'll dump him here, and then I will go over to my incubator. Just a question, would you disable mating when you dump him there? Yeah, I'll okay. di disable mating quickly, go over here, dump all the eggs in, and then I will check to see if I've got a mutation. And then if I have got a mutation, I don't bother with him anymore. I will swap to my health one and carry on with my health one then for a chance to get a health mutation. But if I haven't got a mutation, I will then walk him all the way up there, mate with all of them, and so on, until I've mated every single one of the females. And hopefully I've got a mutation. If I haven't, I've got to wait two days for the timer, for their mating timer to come down, and then I can try again. If I have got a mutation, I'll find out in the incubator I've got a mutation. I will save that egg special and I will take it up to the top base, up the top there, and dump it in our main incubator and wait till it's ready. To spot a mutation, it's, it's easier now when you've got these new incubators. It is easier. A lot of people were a bit confused when it came out and it wasn't showing you the stats in there. It was showing you the points rather than your, your numbers. Because back in the day, everybody used to write on top of them 502 melee and uh, 6,500 health. And that's, that, that would be, you would know that's what you were getting. And you'd dump all your eggs along on incubators and just hatch them manually. But it's actually easier with this. The only downside is that it runs on points and not on actual stats, um, like the amounts you'd have in each stat. The thing with the points is, when you get a wild diner, you don't know how many points are in there. The Dodex does a good point calculator, stat uh, point calculator, which you can type in the, uh, the stat you've got and it'll tell you how many points are in it. Or you can just mate it with something, grab an egg, dump it in the incubator, see what the points are. When it hatches, you'll know what the points are compared to the stat you're looking for. So anyway, once you've identified the, the stat, so let's say I've got 6,500 health. Once I've put it in the incubator, I'll know that it's uh, 13 mutations and also 63 points. So once you've identified the points that you've got in that stat, every time you run them up against the females, you're looking for an increase in the points because it won't tell you the stat of the health. So you're looking for an increase in the points. So you run them up against the female. I know I've got 63 points in health. Once I've run them all up through the females, I want to see an increase in those points against health. Every stat mutation will give you two points, and it'll also give you two levels. So it'll add two levels to the dino, and it'll, that uh, number there, that 63 points, will increase to 65. So I put all my eggs in the incubator, and I go through them all, just looking at health, and I'm looking for 65 points in health. Once I've got that, I take them up to the main base and put them on the incubator ready. So I'll show you now what I mean by the stats. We see that 6,528 health, 13 out of 20 mutations, and 63 points. So that's my health at the moment. If we head up to main base, I did actually get a couple of mutations yesterday when I mated them. And I got a um, mutation in health and I got a mutation in melee. I managed to run through half the females and get one and then the other half and get the other. So up at main, I will then dump them in the incubator, hatch them. And you can see here these two. This one is my health. And you can see this, the points have increased to 65 points. My health has increased and I'm now up to 14 out of 20 mutations. So what I'll do then is I'll grow these without imprinting them. 
Um, I know with the names in uh, in the heading, I, I'm not going to lose too much control over them, but I like to leave them unimprinted and unleveled just to make sure, so I don't touch the imprints. So yeah, you will see an increase in uh, the, uh, the points by two and the overall level by two per mutation. I'm not sure there's anything else I need to say. That might be. I think that might be it. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. So the reason I'm putting. Ah, yes. 13 out of 20 and things like that in the heading is because once you have a look at their ancestral line you can see the amount of mutations I've got. I've actually got 11 on the paternal and 2 on the maternal. Once they are mated um, together that will increase so they will add together. When you're looking to gain mutations, when you've got 0 out of 20 mutations, you've got a certain percentage of a chance of gaining a mutation. Once you've got 20 out of 20, that percentage of a chance of getting a mutation drops dramatically. So when I hit 20 out of 20, I'm not going to get so many frequent mutations. So you either need to up how many females you've got, or just persevere that you're going to get one a week rather than one a day. So I mark it in the heading to know how many out of 20 I'm getting. As you can see by the ancestral line, I've actually got two on one side and 11 on the other. They add together. So don't think, oh, it's okay. I know I've got 20 out of 20 on one side, but I'm clean on the other side. I've got a better chance of getting a mutation. That's not true. You've still got an overall over 20 out of 20 mutations. The only thing that will help you get more mutations if you've got 20 out of 20 or more than that, if you've got 4,000 out of 20 on one side, you will not gain any more mutations easily by having the other side clean as well. The only thing that will help you is by having clean females. If you've got mutations on your females and you've got mutations on your males, those numbers will increase incredibly quickly. And as soon as you've got over 20 on a female and over 20 on a male, you have got no chance of getting a mutation. I mean, the percentage is so low, you're fighting a losing battle. So what you want to do is make sure that you keep your mutations separate so you can get as many as you want. So I'm keeping my health stack completely separate from my melee stack to make sure I can get an easy 20 melee mutations and an easy 20 health mutations. Once that's happened, and I'm 20 out of 20, all I've got going for me then is the fact I've got clean females. It does get harder to get past your 20 mark, but it'll become even harder if you start meeting these two together because you're going to end up with 20 out of 20 very quickly. So you'll always keep a line. So I will only have a health mutation on that. And if I mate him and he gets a melee mutation, that baby gets killed. You only want to save health mutations on this line and melee mutations on this line and you don't want to combine them too early you don't want to combine them at all when you're mating against these females so keep them separate and again if you're doing weight or stamina or anything else you want to get keep it separate from all your other stats get up to your 20 out of 20 and then keep going and go to 21 out of 20 and so on but always keep your females clean otherwise you're going to find it real trouble to get any more so what about when you want to, like, say, so you, know, you want to test them. So you want to test the one that's got the health and the melee on it and take it out and test it against stuff. What would you do to get them both on one to one, take them out? Uh, oh, yeah. Also, before I answer that question, um, when you do mate and you gain a mutation, you will not always gain a mutation in a male and you need a male because you need to line your male up with all the females so if you end up and you've got your mutation and you're like brilliant I've got my new melee or I've got my new health but it's in a female I now need to mate it with something else to be able to turn it into a male so what I do then is for example I have got here we go I've got a female new health 
So I can't grow that and go mate it against a load of females. I need that health in a male. So what I do then is I take that female over to my one and only clean male when the lag bloody lets me. So I've got my one and only clean male here. This is all my tame stats, and it's a clean male. I've had him since the very start. So what I'll do, if you check him out here in the ancestral line, he is completely clean at the top. It's He is a combination of all my best stats that I've had when I was first taming. So those are all the best I could find when I was taming. But he's clean. So I'll bring my female with my latest mutation over, and I'll mate him with him until that stat, the, the health or the melee stat from that female, gets pulled over into a male. He's not going to give her any crap because he's clean. So it'll still stay 13 out of 20, 14 out of 20, whatever you've got. But you'll end up then moving the stat over to hopefully a male. So then once you've got it in a male, you can take it downstairs to the other base and line it up against all the females. If you want to then think, oh, I'm only 10 out of 20 on my, my mutations, but I want to see what they do, I want to combine them, you can quite happily, like I've done with a couple of these, once you've got a female and you think, I've now brought that over into a male, I leave my females lying around because I'm using the males down there. This was my 502 female. So now I don't care about mutations because I'm just going to breed them together to have a bit of fun with them. What I do then is I can mate it with this one and bring all the stats in. And I will mate my leftover female health, my leftover female melee, anything that I've gained from down there that I've had to put into a male, I'll mate together. And then I'll bring them all into one dino. So this one's got my old 6-3 and my old 4-5-6 um, melee, and I've combined them all onto one dino. But I'll show you now what happens to your uh, maternal and paternal lines and your mutation stacks when you combine them. It goes fucking nuts. You've got 155 out of 20 and 231 out of 20. And that's only because I've combined a few 10 out of 20, 11 out of 20 and a few others in there. And it adds them every single time. So this one is ruined. All it can ever do now is keep mating with these for something to play with. So I'll keep mating him now with every female I didn't need because I've brought it over into a male. Like now I'm waiting to bring that 502 into this so I can have 6-3 health with a 502 melee. I'll never use it for breeding, but what I'll do then is I use it to breed to gain eggs to use. And then I'll imprint those and I'll go out and I'll test them, see what they're like, have a bit of fun with them. But as far as breeding goes, you want to keep your, your, your health and your melee or whatever stat you're doing as clean as possible and keep it down to every time you get a mutation, it adds one to that stack of 20. Because if you start combining them and messing with them, you'll end up in a mass of trouble like I, I've got with this one here. And you'll struggle to get a new mutation on it because it's totally gone all hell wire with the, the amount of mutations it's got. But this is what I'll do. I'll combine them all with this one bring this one in and then I can imprint them, play with them and see what they do. Which I think the dino lady will have a video of me going out yeah. and seeing what these shitty fucking lizards will do. Because they've got a base damage of 10, which is a Fiomia's base damage. So they are crap. But I've combined some stats and I go out and I try and kill some alphas. So you'll see that later. Anyway, I don't know if I've explained it very clearly. It's... It's a little bit confusing looking at mutations with the dinos. I'm not claiming to know anything or all of it or as much as I should know about mutations and stat breeding with dinos on ARC. But that's what I've been doing and it seems to be working at the moment. I'm gaining mutations. I'm stacking them quite comfortably. I haven't had any problems as, yet, as of yet. But I'm sure there's some breeders out there which will know far more than me. And if you've got any advice, please stick it in the comments and let me know because I probably have made mistakes at somewhere.